I'll never forget back in 1962, I got a frantic phone call when NBC said they wanted me to replace a big television host who had retired from show business. You remember the very first time? I remember it. You probably don't. What's this? The very first time. The you what? said... And now, here's Johnny! the orgy begin. <laughs> I better explain this. Uh, some guy, some clown, walks into our office the other day. He's wearing this toga, which is a new thing. He said that they're trying to get the fellows wear uh, this summer. It's just an old toga. Is there a draft in here? <laughs> I feel like a real boy wonder. <laughs> People look at you and wonder, is that a real boy? <laughs> oh, I feel like an idiot. <laughs> you folks at home without color sets, this is a, uh, this is a royal blue, blue. royal blue with a gold sash. Mm. And my legs are as white as the underbelly of a born gosling. And <laughs> Oh, 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 yeah, well, that's when I kick him a rip shot. Uh, I know what you're thinking now, right? I know, I, know, I know what you're all thinking. Same thing with a Scotsman, you know, wears kilts. You're saying, what? What is he wearing underneath? What is he wearing underneath? Yeah. Yeah. Wait a minute. This is not open end. Uh, what does anybody wear under an everyday toga? My everyday fruit of the looms. <laughs> what other show would walk out and do this? Can you see Sullivan opening with one of these? Never. <laughs> Want to get the Christians ready? <laughs> anyway, in the Los Angeles Times this morning, there was a letter from a woman Complaining, this is true. You can check the times right after the show. She was complaining to Dear Abby that her husband would not have sex with her until after the Tonight Show. <laughs> the headline said, Man refuses to have sex with wife until he's through with Carson. <laughs> oh, now that's, uh, I thought, so. There's nothing wrong with having sex during the Tonight Show. It's never stopped the studio audience at all. <laughs> In high school, though, when you're young, you know, with the girls, I remember me and my best girl, Emily Cockenlocker. We used to... Up in the bleachers. You know Emily. I knew her well. From Nebraska. German girl. Little Emily Cockenlocker. Yeah. We used to... We would... Uh, be all huddled in a blanket with a flask up in the bleachers. And that, that was in July. <laughs> Boy, the season. She was a weird girl. So I went to a very small high school in, the, in Nebraska. How small was it? Well, during... <laughs> this guy's been watching the show too long. We got 40 million straight people. Uh, when I say straight people, I mean like straight men. I don't mean... <laughs> we had a, a high school that was so small that during halftime, one guy came out and formed a picture of the United States. One guy. Was, uh, That's small. Oh, that was a small thing. We got a dandy show. I'm going to go out and slip into something comfortable because I'm beginning to feel like a nut. With his faithful Indian companion, Tonto, the masked rider of the plains, led the fight for law and order in the early West. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Would you welcome his faithful companion, Jay Silverheels Tonto? Yes. You know, working so closely for all these years with one man, even the Lone Ranger, uh, would probably put a strain on any relationship. And we were wondering what might happen if 
Tonto decided he wanted a temporary change and decided to seek employment elsewhere. So uh, here's the premise. I'm playing the personnel director of a large corporation, for example, NBC, and I'm going to interview prospective employees. Now, uh, let's see who's the next applicant. Tishman, Tibor, Tobias, Tonto. Uh, Miss Loomis, would you send in Mr. Tonto, please? Mm, nice of you to come in. Let's see. Let's, let's get right to the, the application here. Uh, may I have the last name, please? Tonto. All righty. The first, Tonto. Tonto, Tonto? No, no. No first or last name, all Tonto. <laughs> well, that's, that's certainly an unusual name. Ah, just talking about that the other day with Hildegard, Kenton Vloss, and Ethan Zimbalist, Jr. Well, Mr. Tonto, I... <laughs> I'm just looking over your application here, and um, now would you tell me, who was your uh, last employer? Can I have that? I uh, worked 30 years as faithful sidekick for Kimasabe. Mm -hmm. Hunt, fish, make food, sew clothes, mm -hmm. sweep up, stay awake all night, listen for enemies for Kimasabe, mm -hmm. risk life for Kimasabe. Mm -hmm. 30 lousy years. <laughs> For this, what, what was your salary? Salary? What salary? Well, your, your, your payment, something he gave you in exchange for your chores. Uh, once came a sub, let me peek on the mask. Yeah. No big deal. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, but no money. Mm, silver bullets don't go on tumbleweed, fella. <laughs> You've got to buy them with Tonto's salary. Oh, I see. That's right. He was always giving away silver bullets. Silver this, silver that, high owe silver. Oh, uh, Kimasabe had precious metal hang-up. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> by, the, uh, by the way, what does, what does Kimasabe mean? <laughs> and why did he uh, finally leave? Uh, him find out what Kimasabe means. Well, that would do it, yes. <laughs> Now, Mr. Tonto, as you know, this is a highly industrial society. We need specialized skills. Do you have any of those? Mm, Tonto can ride upside down, hanging from horse to avoid getting shot. Well, I, I don't know about that. How about standing outside window and imitating owl? Mm, I'm sorry, all our vice presidential positions are filled. <laughs> if we do find a position, where would you like to uh, relocate, Tonto? Mm, Toronto. Toronto, Tonto? <laughs> do, you, uh, do you have any special language skills, Tonto? Uh, Tonto speak Esperanto. <laughs> Tonto, Esperanto. So, as I understand this now, your, your ideal job would be... Uh... Uh, Tonto to Toronto for Esperanto and Tonto. Thank you very much, Tonto. We'll try to fix you. I have a feeling Bette Midler is going to fit right into the aura of this show tonight. Uh, you know, one of the great kicks of doing The Tonight Show is seeing people who come on here and make, well, possibly maybe their initial television appearance or very shortly in their career, and then see what happens several years later. There have been so many through the history of The Tonight Show. And this young lady had been singing, believe it or not, in a, remember, a men's, in a men's Turkish bath in New York City. Very, very strange. But as soon as you heard her sing, you knew that... Uh, there was a very unique and very good talent there. And in the past year, she's been hailed as the first star of the 70s. Um, would you welcome, please, Bette Midler. I asked what she was going to sing for us, and you told me she wanted to explain it. What, yes, what's to explain yes, about I, your song? I must explain, because you will probably not recognize it once Miss Eric has sung it. Now, the song is what we call the Hubba Hubba. Now, Hubba Hubba is music that was sung in the 40s, mostly by the girl groups, like the Andrews Sisters. The Andrews Sisters, they were hot. Oh, they were hot. I'm hip there. Very much together. Oh, yes. They raised their eyebrows in unison. Yes. Remarkable. <laughs> I love those. Well, anyway, I gotta tell you that I always have a little trouble because the right side of my body is terrific. But, you know, I got all those 40s moves down, but the left side is just the pits. Just will not do anything. So I just want you to be real, real kind. <laughs>
Nice to see you're the sweet, unspoiled, natural, uh, same as ever. charmer that you always were. Well, we have trash. to take a, we'll have to take a, uh, <laughs> the last of the great guys. We'll take a, we'll take a break.